Hi everyone, I'm Fiona Forbes. Welcome to my living room once again and welcome to On Stage. We are keeping the music alive. Yes, we have moved our live concert series to my house to come to your house uh, and we'll be blasting it out every day that we can at around five o'clock to bring you some music, something to brighten your day, we hope. And uh, there's a lot going on in the world, as you know. Watching the news, I know I am one to watch the news to keep informed, but we do need the feel-good stuff. We do need some humor, we do need some entertainment and music, of course. Uh, so I thought I'd show you a little more good news today, at least some stuff that I found uh, funny. First of all, Larry David, funny. Curb your enthusiasm, really funny. Larry David doing a public service announcement for COVID. Yes, it is funny, but it's such an important message. So ladies and gentlemen, here is the one and only Larry David. Hello, I'm Larry David. Obviously somebody put me up to this because it's generally not the kind of thing I do, but I basically want to address uh, the idiots out there, and, and you, you know who you are. You're going out. I don't know what you're doing. You're, you're socializing too close. It's, it's not good. You're hurting old people like me. Well, not me. I have nothing to do with you. I'll never see you. But, you know, other, let's say other old people who might be your relatives. Who the hell knows? But it, it, the problem is you're passing up a fantastic opportunity, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to stay in the house sit on the couch and, and watch, watch TV. I mean, I, I don't know how you're passing that up. Well, maybe because you're not, you're not that bright. Yes, he's uh, speaking to the crowds that were on Kitt's Beach a couple weeks ago as well. Although that message, of course, was made for Californians to stay home to protect uh, seniors, as Larry is. I know it's awkward to call somebody a senior, <laughs> but uh, very important for all of us as well. And it is really true. If somebody told us when we were teenagers, guys, guys, there's going to be an opportunity later in life, and yes, everything's going to suck around you, but you're going to be able to continue your teenage life at sitting on the couch, eating a whole bunch of junk food, and doing whatever you want, well, at least inside, we would have said, yeah, but uh, we have to look at it that way and spin the positive on it as we do have to stay home. Uh, here in Canada, our numbers, well, they weren't, I don't know, they weren't as good as I expected today. And it just is so much more important for us to uh, stay inside, uh, respect social distancing. If you do have to go out, if you have to go out, make sure it's only for something you really need. And the more we do that, guess what? the less time we'll have to do this. And that is our goal. And uh, I thought I'd br bring you another public service announcement. It's all the way from Edinburgh. Someone else who's a little bit of a senior. This is a 93 year old granny. And it was her grandchild who posted it on Twitter, but it's such a sweet message, such a sweet grandma. Well, the same message as Larry David, but have a listen. Just, just speak to everybody, mom, say hello. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm still here, I'm telling you I'm like a bad penny, there's no getting rid of me, and I hope you're all keeping well and doing what you're told, keep to the rules and you'll all be fine, it'll all pass, bye bye for now, love you all and think about you a lot. So sweet. I doubt Granny knew that was going out to Twitter. I think she thought it was going out to her other grandchildren. It's got a couple million views now. But uh, well said by that Granny as we're all self-isolating at home. And here at On Stage, uh, what we decided to do when we uh, had to make the best of the way things are in the world is we decided to bring music to you because it is proven that music therapy can help anyone. Uh, through a difficult time and that is definitely what we're going through right now in the world so we're very proud to be partnered with Music Heals Canada and we thought why not have Music Heals on to talk about what they do so uh, it's our pleasure to introduce you to Taryn right now who's joining us from her home Taryn how are you um, I'm doing okay honestly I am healthy um, and I'm working from home with my amazing team all working remotely. Um, I am okay. 
Yeah, it's a weird time and I have to say I'm really thankful that I'm able to work from home too. Uh, anything that we can do to self-isolate and uh, Taryn, as you know, uh, we've been talking about music therapy all week or for two weeks now, I think I've lost track of time. But uh, we thought it was a great opportunity to talk to you, go straight to the source, music heals. Taryn, tell us how during this time of self-isolation, how music can help lift everyone's spirits. Yeah, I mean, um, that's a great question, Fiona. Um, we're seeing globally that people are really leaning into musical experiences. Um, the people in, in Italy who were singing to each other on their patios were, were trying to find, find a way to connect through music so that they can feel like they're together even though they can't be. Um, and that's a big part of what music therapy does, right? Um, it helps with those moments of isolation um, and, it, and it helps with those moments of community and, and confidence and just well-being. Taryn, with your experience with music therapy, you know, usually it isn't people like us that are isolated. Uh, it's kids in hospital, patients in hospital, seniors' homes. How have you seen throughout uh, your time uh, around music therapy, how have you seen it help people? Um, the amount of ways I have seen music help people through music therapy is countless. Um, I can share with you one of the most powerful moments that I've experienced in my time with Music Heals. Um, we were doing a site tour of a uh, seniors care facility and um, they were predominantly using music therapy for patients who had uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. And there was a gentleman who was sitting there um, and very quiet, very insular um, and had a lot of like confusion as to where he was and who he was sitting with. Um, and by this second chorus of a Beatles song, he looked at his wife and knew who she was. And, and it brought that, that, that trigger point of the memory that music can access. It just, it lit him up for, for a brief moment. And, and I think of that often. Um, I also think about that often when we're hearing in the news about the struggles that care homes and facilities are having right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, I, uh, yeah. You're going to make me cry, by the way, but it's so incredible the power that music has to heal. What are your recommendations for people who are self-isolating, that are feeling down? How? What kind of music should we be looking at? Is it an old album? Is there any advice you can give or just turn it on and crank it up to 11? I mean, I have to be very honest with you. I am not a registered music therapist, uh, so I don't necessarily want to prescribe a specific type of music for anyone. Um, I would say do what feels right. Um, music has an ability to access your emotions at, on a very different level than, than, other, than other forms of, of therapy. Um, I would say do what feels right and do what you can tap into uh, for whatever you're experiencing. I would also say if you've got kids at home right now and you're trying to navigate homeschooling and screen time and all of these sorts of things, find a way to incorporate music into what they're doing right now. Um, I think that that'll make a really big difference. Well, we uh, know it's made a really big difference difference uh, being connected with you, Taryn, and, and music heals and music therapy itself. I've learned so much in the last couple of weeks. So thank you for all the incredible work that you do at Music Heals. Yeah, and, and thank you guys uh, for A, reaching out to us and thinking of us as we try and navigate this world of programs being paused and canceled um, and doing things remotely. Um, and then we have other incredible stories like you know, BC Children's Hospital is just deemed music therapy an essential service, which is pretty powerful. It, it shows what a difference it's making in, in the lives of those children. Um, and, and in our moment of need at Music Heals, it, it felt really reassuring to have somebody um, like you guys come to us and say, how can we spread the message? So thank you. 
Uh, well, thank to you, thanks to your team as well, Taryn. Uh, Taryn's been chatting with us from her home in downtown Vancouver. Now, we know a lot of you don't have a lot of money to give right now. Uh, but if you do, you can donate to Music Heals because to keep uh, things like this going, of course, they need help from people out there wherever they can get it. There is a donate button right on the Music Heals website. We've got the website on the screen for you right now. So if you do have something to give, please do. And if you don't, go to the website anyway. Taryn was giving a few uh, bits of advice there, but there is a ton of information about how music therapy can help us all right on the Music Heals website. So thanks to Taryn and everyone. And uh, every year, Music Heals has a fantastic gala to raise money and awareness for music therapy. It's called Strike a Chord, and it happened a few months back at the Commodore, and we're lucky enough today to talk to someone who was performing performing at that gala. Here is my friend, Warren Dean Flandes. Warren, how are you? Ah, uh, Fiona, thank you so much for having me. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you so much. How are you? Now you're at, I'm good, thank you. And I'm in my living room. You're in yours. How are you and your family doing self-isolating? You know, we're doing, we're doing good. I think that um, this is a time for us to, you know, we travel a lot, we're very busy and we have a lot on the go and just to be able to have dinner together, to sit down together, to uh, my wife and my son Noble are just in the back there, in the back, <laughs> wife's working and um, remotely and just to be able to, you know, be together and, and cherish the kind of little small things that you take for granted every day. Um, it's been nice. It's been nice and it's been relaxing and it's, it's a time to kind of regroup even when all this craziness is going on in the world. Yes, and I'm thankful for the little things, including my little dog, who Warren knows, who is uh, barking a little bit there. But it is true, Warren. It's, it's, you know, taking, obviously, we don't want this situation in the world, but making the best of it is what we all have to do right now at home. And of course, you're a musician. Tell me about how music is helping you uh, with this difficult time we're in right now. It's interesting because music has always been a source of therapy for me ever since I was, was young. You know, it's a, it's a source of how I express all my feelings, whether it be, you know, happy or sad or, you know, angry, whatever I may be feeling. So I've been taking this time to really kind of just reflect on um, what I've done to this point, but also just starting some new material and um, taking this opportunity to write and collaborate, you know, over, over the internet, which is really amazing and just with people all over the world. And um, just taking this time to really uh, be thankful that we still have that outlet and um, we can share it with other people as well. And we've been talking about music therapy here over the past couple of weeks and how it usually is used for patients in hospitals or seniors' homes, people are, who are isolated that way. But now that we're all in that position where we need to take some time, Warren, what are your thoughts on how music can lift us all up during this time? You know, music is a form of, it's, it's, a, it's a one language that everyone can understand across the globe. Uh, so I think that what we need to do is use music to um, unite each other. I think it's amazing how, you know, at seven o'clock, you know, we live in the burbs out in Tawasson. And so for us to step out, you know, uh, onto our deck and then just hear everyone like just cheering and, and, you know, banging pots and pans, it's just incredible. But we also have someone next door who's playing the guitar few people down the street are singing, someone's playing the bagpipes. It is incredible how, you know, people can just come together at a time like this and uh, use music to just uplift and support people. Yeah, it is true. The seven o'clock cheer is such a moving moment. Uh, just because you said that the other day, one of my neighbor's kids was playing the violin. And I don't know about the bagpipe thing, whether we're hearing the same one, because those things are loud, but I have one in my neighborhood too. And it's not usually the kind of thing you'd hear together, pots and pans and bagpipes and violins, but somehow it's just the most beautiful noise, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. 
And what else do you have planned for yourself isolation time outside of Music Warren? Obviously spending time with your family is one of them, but anything else keeping you busy? I, you know, it's been interesting because I am not a handyman by any means. My, my father is. And so it's been interesting that I've, you know, I've really found that I enjoy doing stuff around the house. You know, we installed like a closet organizer and some shelves and, you know, we were doing some gardening and I planted a tree with my wife. And, you know, these are things that, you know, I didn't even know how to use a lawnmower when we first moved out here from Yale Town. So um, <laughs> my neighbors were just looking at me like I was crazy. But just to do just to do things like that, that, you know, that, you know, you sometimes take for granted, you know, they're just chores in life. I'm trying I'm finding some solace and some peace and just kind of being able to do that around the house. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Warren, as I mentioned, you were one of the performers at uh, the Strike Accord Gala that is put on by Music Heals every year to raise money and awareness for music therapy. And we're going to have a look at your performance. But before we roll it, uh, tell us what we're about to see, because it's not just you on the stage. Ah, yes. Um, this was probably one of uh, the most, probably the highlight of my year performance wise. Um, I was given the incredible honor and opportunity to open the Strike Accord Gala for Music Heals at the Commodore. And um, Rob and everyone at Music Heals, they wanted something, you know, just kind of big that brought everything and everyone together. So it is uh, myself as well as an amazing, amazing band and um, that I'm so fortunate to have played with, as well as I think we have 10 dancers and like a 40 piece choir with us or 30 piece choir called the Top Line Vocal Collective. Shout out to them. And uh, yeah, it's it's just um, a medley of feel good music, inspirational music and uh, some throwbacks that you might recognize. Well, thank you, Warren. And thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, that was Warren Dean Flandes joining us from his living room in Tawasson. And what we're about to show you is a performance uh, that was shot a few months back for the Strike Accord Gala. It was at the Commodore Ballroom. So yes, you're going to see a ton of people on the stage. You're going to see a great audience. And yes, we will get back to that life if we all stay home and self-isolate. Uh, and we're looking forward to being able to get together for events like that sometime soon but ladies and gentlemen here is some absolute feel-good music for you here is Warren Dean Flandes
It's funny how music can change a situation. I said it's funny how music can change a situation. Vancouver, do you believe that music can heal? If you do, I'd love to see it all on your feet right now. If you believe music heals, come on, come on.
And that was Warren Dean Flandes, uh, filmed a couple months ago at the Commodore Ballroom. It was the Strike Accord Gala for Music Heals Canada. If you want to find out more about Warren and what he's up to with his music, you can just go check out his website. Uh, we want to thank Warren for joining us today via Skype and sending us that footage as well. And we all can't wait till we can go to places like the Commodore again. But what we have to do until then is self-isolate at home and take good care of your friends and family. Family. Uh, it's always great to give somebody a call. An old friend of mine called us uh, last night here and I hadn't spoken to her on the phone. We keep in touch on social media, but just hearing her voice after a few months was such a great thing. So reach out to people. I know it cheered me up and it cheers anyone up to hear somebody else's voice right now. And we are going to continue to bring you the music on stage. Uh, if you are an artist out there and you want to find out how to get on the show the way we're doing it now, it's super easy. You just go to our website and check out the artist submission page. All the info is there for you right now because we can connect with you anywhere in the world from our living room to yours. Uh, and it's Chewy's living room, really. It's not mine at all. He owns the joint. Uh, we also wanted to give a big shout out and thank you to our generous sponsor, Chambers Plan Group Insurance. We wouldn't be able to do this without you, so thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, I uh, hope you got a chance to enjoy the snow and the sunshine today because this is Vancouver and April, what the heck? Anyway, tune in tomorrow to find out who is on stage. And I just bored Chewy to sleep. <laughs> you still there, little man? <laughs>